Okay, so after you have made your design and printed it out on your eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, the first thing you need to do is cut off the excess. And if you have a paper cutter, it's really the easiest way to do it. I bought this from Sam's for around $30, um, I think. It's hard for me to remember. I've had it for quite a while and it's worked really well. I haven't changed the blade since I bought it. Um, but that helps cut off the excess evenly. And then I use this cutting mat to piece my words together. Um, I mean, these lines make it so easy. And of course, I use this painter's tape to temporarily hold it straight and in place while I line it up. And then once I get it lined up, I use this scotch tape to secure it here permanently. I make a lot of signs, so it's worthwhile for me to have these tools. You can definitely, you know, create your sign and cut it without this, but these tools help a whole lot, even if you borrow them. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I finished tracing all of the letters, and now I'm going to go ahead and take this off so you can see how it looks. I really prefer the white transfer paper, but they didn't have any, so I thought that yellow would be the next best thing. And it does okay, but I do prefer white. So if you see white, I think you'd probably like it better too. I think you can see it good enough, but there's a little closer. <clears throat> you can also see where some of the transfer paper, when it hits the edges, it picks it up, but it comes right off with an eraser, so. It won't be a problem later. Okay, so what you need now is a rag or a paper towel to put under the hand that will be laying on the sign. Um, unless you like to do this work on an easel. I do have an easel, but I only use it for projects that are square or rectangle. When I have a long sign like this, it's easier for me to just move it along a table. So um, I always have to have something under my arm so that I don't smudge all of this and make it unreadable. I have two glasses of water. One is to clean my brush occasionally because it gets, um, the paint gets dried up and goopy so you want to clean it out. And then I have another jar that will just stay clean and I use it and q-tips and I can just dip one in and use it as a little eraser for mistakes so I've got my paint here this is actually a, a chalk paint and I've added a little water to it to thin it out some that's something that you kind of have to play with I can't really tell you how much water to add um, because it all depends on how thick your paint is to begin with. You want it, um, you want it so that it smooths out pretty well, but you don't want it running all over the place. So really, that's just going to be trial and error for you.
So I use these magnifying glasses. Now that I'm in my 40s, yes, things are blurring up close. And I've also got a light up here. Um, it's just one of those clip-on lights shining directly down so that I can see better. paint may be a little too thick. Okay, I have to stop here. This is usually how it works for me. I do a little here and a little there, but I will pick it up again later.